I discovered Ben Iverson, his first book, when I was in Virginia Beach, wondering what I was doing in Virginia Beach. And I found his book and I read it, and that was his book, first book. And I thought, boy, this is really interesting stuff. So I wrote him a letter and he wrote back, and we started a conversation through mail. It was pre internet days, so it was typed it out, put it in an envelope, put a stamp on it, and wait for his reply. <laughs> but we did that almost every day for 14 years. And uh, we met several times at conferences, and he came to visit a few times, and I went to visit him once in Oregon. And um, quite a human being. He was what you would call a rugged individualist when we still had rugged individualists in this country. He grew up in the timber industry his, in Oregon. His dad had a sawmill, and of course he worked the, the timber. And then he studied the university and got a civil engineering degree, and, and he became uh, quite prominent in California highway system and Oregon system. And he started his interest in this arithmetic uh, way back in the 40s or 50s. And uh, he became a programmer. And he said the first thing he did on the computer was start computing this quantum arithmetic, <laughs> which was quite interesting. And those original programs became the quantized program that he developed over the years. I was quite fascinated with his, with his system, what he was doing, where he got it. He, uh, he said he intuited it, he got it mostly through dreams. His contact, he said, was Archimedes. And Archimedes would appear to him and give him all this information and he developed a system. That's the way he did it. In fact, uh, his uh, quantized program has a few lines in it that doesn't make any sense. And I asked him about it and he says, what are these lines, you know, what's this, what's this do in the program? He says, well, I don't know. So nobody really knows what those lines do, unless they're better programmers than we are. Of course, I'm not much of a programmer. So anyway, we developed a, a relationship and got to know each other over the years. And um, he told me, he said, I wrote my first book and I gave it to the Edgar Casey Library when we visited one time and he went back home and he said, nobody ever showed any interest in it. So he forgot, he just, let go of it, the whole thing, until I wrote him. And that sparked his interest again, and he got alive, and he, be, he started writing, and he never stopped writing. The guy was a demon writing stuff. And so he wrote, eventually he wrote three series of books, his first book and then three series. This was, first series was a Pythagoras and the Quantum World. He wrote quite a few editions of this, and he rewrote every volume at least once, and then uh, he had this aggravating habit of putting the same title on different books. And it's driven everybody crazy trying to get them sorted out. And, and he says, well, this book has been superseded, you know, discard it. But over the years, I realized, why discard it? I, never, I don't throw books away, so I put them back into print. They may be repetitive of some later book, I don't know, but we still have it and it's still available for anybody who wants to read it. And then he came out with his quantum arithmetic series, several volumes, same problem, same title for all the books. And that was a further development. And then he got real excited and he wanted to summarize all of his work into another series, which he called QA1, Quantum Arithmetic 1, 2, and 3. So there's a three volume set. Here's a picture of him in color at a conference in Colorado Springs in 1989, I think it was. And uh, it's a complicated subject, kind of like SVP. It's got a lot of pieces to it, got a lot of rules to it. And um, I did some uh, discovery work with it. I went back through his books one time and I pulled out all of the entities, the geometric entities, the numeric entities, and the rules and the points that I thought were important to this thing because I wanted to know what it was that was that we were doing. And I put I published that as a paper on the SVP wiki. 
And then I said, Ben, I think um, this thing has to go 3D because all his work was 2D, two-dimensional on paper. He says, I think if we took this three-dimensionally, it would have a whole new meaning. And I think that's where the value of it lies. So we started to do that. And that happened just about the time he died and the time I burned out on it. I didn't want to see it, didn't want to read it, didn't want to touch it. I was just, I'm done. Um, it basically is, as I understand it, it's a system of doing arithmetic with areas, like a square. So many squares would equal another bigger square, and they were all identified by letters. And it was kind of neat, except we never found a use for it. I think if we take it 3D, we'll find uses for it, but we never found a use for it in 2D. It's a very curious pr process he developed. It's, it's amazingly intellectually challenging and, and really neat, but we never found a use for it. And then he took an interest in SVP, the work I was doing, so he tried to match his work with music or the elements of music. And in those days, we really didn't know a lot about SVP. And um, I think if we looked at the geometric proportions and ratios and things of that nature, we'd have found a lot of connectivity with SVP. His work trying to match it into music theory didn't really work. I mean, he did a lot of work with it, and he did some uh, acoustic programming in the computer, and he could do all this stuff with that but it never really matched standard music theories. And um, it's like everything else, you know, if we had a team of people, we could expand this thing a lot. For instance, he said there was no way to compute the area of a circle with quantum arithmetic, and I found three ways to do it. So there was a lot of stuff in it that was poorly developed. It's just a big subject, you know, one man trying to do something by himself. So I think it's got a big future. If we get the right people on it, we start looking at 3D projections like projective geometry. I think it would match in there very well. In the meantime, I'll keep carrying his material in the catalog, and, and if there's any interest, maybe we something could be developed on this end.